the story of a master Shandao. Master Shandao, whose lay surname was Zhu, was born in six thirteen Common Era. He was a native of Suzhou, Anhui Province. During the master's youth, Emperor Yang of the Sui Dynasty thrice tried to conquer Korea, but failed. Wars broke out in different places, and the dynasty soon collapsed. When he was eleven, Shandao witnessed the sufferings of this world. The wish sprouted in his heart to find a way to transcend it. He travelled far to Mijou in Shandong Province, where he took monastic vows under Master Mingsheng. Master Mingsheng was a lineage master of the Sanlun School. He was fond of this boy of unusual bearing, and gave him the Dharma name of Shandao to guide skillfully. Mingsheng earnestly taught his young disciple. Such Mahayana scriptures as the Lotus Sutra and the Vimalakirti Sutra. By chance, Master Shandao came across portrait of the Western Land of Bliss, a painting depicting the magnificence of Amitabha's Land of Bliss. Fascinated and absorbed, he developed a resolve to be reborn there. The master took full monastic vows at the age of twenty. He formally became a beggar. Shandao then travelled widely in search of Dharma teachers. He painstakingly sought a way to be reborn in the land of bliss. On one occasion, Master Shandao studied the contemplation of Infinite Life Sutra. With a monk named Miao Kai, he learned that by visualizing contemplatively Amitabha Buddha and the splendors of the Pure Land, he could fulfill his wish to be reborn there. At the age of twenty-three, the master went to Wujin Monastery in the Zhongnan Mountains near Chang'an. The quiet, serene environment. Was most conducive to contemplation. Using the contemplative methods of the Contemplation Sutra, Shandao practiced diligently for several years. He realized contemplative samadhi and, in a state of deep concentration, was able to view the land of bliss. It was like seeing objects before him. So clear were the views. Alone and without instruction, Master Shandao, as able in his twenties to attain contemplative samadhi, this achievement was unprecedented and never equaled. It wasn't hard to understand why Master Dao Shen, founder of the Vinaya Precept School, included Shandao. His junior by seventeen years in his biographies of prominent monastics continued. Though he had achieved samadhi, the master was not complacent. He diligently explored teachings about the Pure Land. At the age of twenty-nine, Shandao heard. That Master Dao Chuo was teaching the deeper meanings of the Contemplation Sutra at Xianzhong Monastery in Bingzhou, Shanxi Province. Master Dao Chuo had a lofty reputation for virtue. He was the senior monk with the most thorough grasp of Pure Land's principles. Dao Chuo expounded the Contemplation Sutra two hundred times, and urged his disciples to recite Amitabha's name and be reborn in the Pure Land. He wrote the Two Scroll Collection on the Land of Peace and Joy. Having inherited the pristine Pure Land, thought of masters Nagarjuna, Basubandhu, and Tanlan. 
He laid the foundations for the establishment of the Pure Land School. Master Dao Chuo, then eighty, was delighted to see Master Shen Dao. He taught and passed on to the younger monk everything he learned over a lifetime. The knowledge would have a deep impact on the development of Master Shen Dao's thinking. After Dao Chuo's explanation, Shen Dao understood that visualization wasn't the only way to gain rebirth in the land of bliss. It was also possible to sow through the vocal recitation of Amitabha Buddha's name. The former was difficult, and the latter easy. Shen Dao learned that everyone was certain to be reborn. So long as they relied on the power of Amitabha's great vow, and recited the Buddha's name exclusively. Four years later, Master Dao Chuo passed away, and Master Shen Dao returned to Wujin Monastery. That same year, Master Shen Zhang returned to Chang'an with scriptures from India. Buddhism approached its apex in China. Even so, the text contents were as steep as the oceans, and most people could only limit their inability to fathom them. Moreover, there were eighty-four thousand Dharma paths. Most practitioners were vexed by the question of where to begin. After entering China, Buddhism underwent several centuries of exploration and development. In the late Sui and early Tang period, lineage masters set up the eight major schools of Mahayana Buddhism. One of them, the Pure Land School, was established by Master Shen Dao. Pure Land practice was completely different from that of the other paths. It had been misunderstood since antiquity. Different traditions interpreted it differently, as there wasn't a unified yardstick. This prompted Master Shen Dao, after returning to Wujin Monastery, to write his commentary on the Contemplation Sutra, so as to provide a benchmark for all time. He advocated the special characteristics of recitation of Amitabha's name. Relying on his fundamental vow, rebirth of ordinary beings in the Pure Land's realm of rewards, rebirth assured in the present lifetime, and non-retrogression achieved in this lifetime. After that, Master Shen Dao, for a long time, travelled between Wujin Monastery and Chang'an. In the capital, he taught the Dharma at major monasteries such as Guangming, Ciyin, and Shiji. After three years, Chang'an residents virtually stopped eating meat. In the city, every family knew Avalokitesvara, and every household was familiar with Amitabha. Shen Dao truly helped ordinary people assimilate the Buddha's teachings into their lives. Not only did the master achieve outstanding results propagating the Dharma, his own practice was very rigorous. On entering a Dharma center, he would press palms together and kneel before the Buddha. He single-mindedly recited the name of Amitabha Buddha, never stopping until he was exhausted. Having attained contemplation samadhi, he went to achieve recitation samadhi. The accomplishment was extremely rare in the annals of monasticism. Master Shen Dao observed monastic discipline down to the finest detail. Never did he gaze upon woman. Occupied all day with propagating the Dharma and benefiting others, 
The master always washed his own robes and arms full, never asking others to do it. Zhang Dao never talked frivolities with others, or indulged in meaningless speech or activities. He strictly avoided all thoughts of fame and profit. He always traveled alone, never with an assembly. He was reluctant to discuss worldly affairs, lest they interfered with his practice. Wherever he went, when the master saw dilapidated monasteries, he would have them renovated or repaired. Shan Dao was also known as Master Lai. When he recited the name of Amitabha Buddha, a beam of light would emanate from his mouth. Emperor Gaozong of the Tang Dynasty heard about this and passed out the name Master Light on Shan Dao. Monastics far and wide admired Shan Dao's great virtue. And assembled to learn the Dharma from him. Wujin Monastery continued to expand. By the time the master was forty-three, it had six clusters of temples and pagodas, and several thousand monastics. Its halls numbered over four thousand. The upper and lower sections stretched continuously for four kilometers. Master Shen Dao taught the Dharma there, and Wujin Monastery became the ancestral temple of the Pure Land School. The master was not only well versed in the Dharma; he also possessed outstanding artistic skills. In 672, when he was 60, Emperor Gaozong wanted to make merit by building a Buddha image at the Longmin Grottoes. Master Shen Dao was appointed chief architect and construction supervisor. He oversaw the creation of the Great Buddha at Longmin, a globally recognized artistic masterpiece. Besides sculpture, the master left to posterity many chants as well as works of music, calligraphy, and painting. They include in praise of Dharma matters, in praise of Prachupana, and in praise of the rite of rebirth, in the form of chants explicating Pure Land teachings. They contained beautiful sung verses. Shen Dao also copied one hundred thousand scrolls of the Amitabha Sutra, with a specimen being discovered in contemporary times. And he created three hundred odd portraits of the Pure Land. A contemplation sutra related mandala by the master was found in the cave of a thousand Buddhas at Dunhuang. In six hundred and eighty-one, Shen Dao was directing the creation of a Pure Land portrait in Shuzi Monastery. One day, he suddenly asked the artists to hurry and finish their work. He told his followers that he would be reborn imminently. Several days later, Master Shen Dao passed away peacefully amid Amitabha recitation by the assembly. He returned to the Western Pure Land, aged sixty-nine. Shen Dao's senior disciple, Master Huai Yun, chose Shen He Yuan at the foothills of the Zhongnan Mountains as an auspicious spot at which to erect a memorial stupa. It was named Chongling Pagoda. Disciples built a temple around it, called Xiangzi Monastery. Decades later, Master Shao Kang. Known as the Latter Day Shen Dao, went specially to visit Shen Dao's memorial hall at Guangming Monastery in Chang'an. After paying respects before an image of Shen Dao, he asked earnestly to see the late master one time. The portrait of Shen Dao 
Thereupon, transformed into a golden Buddha, suspended in the air. Word of the manifestation spread quickly. Posterity came to regard Master Shandao as an emanation of Amitabha Buddha. As founder of the Pure Land School, Master Shandao should have had an eternal, uninterrupted transmission to posterity. Regrettably, the Hui Chung persecution of Buddhism in the Lei Tang and the wartime turmoil of the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms resulted in the loss of most of Shendao's works in China. They included commentary on the Contemplation Sutra, the founding text of the Pure Land School. The authentic Pure Land lineage disappeared. In the following thousand odd years, Pure Land practitioners lacked guidance from the Pure original text. They could only rely on the self-power interpretations of other Buddhist schools. The other power essence of the Pure Land School was turned upside down, and its greatest benefits were lost. It wasn't until the late 20th century that the works of Masters Tan Wan, Dao Chuo and Shen Dao were collated and edited from the Tripitaka by Masters Hui Jing and Jing Zong, then published and circulated widely. The contemporary masters' vigorous promotion enabled the lineage established by Master Shen Dao to shine anew. Once again, successive generations of practitioners are able to step onto the bright pathway to assured rebirth in the Pure Land. Thank you, Namo Amitabha Buddha.